Well, hey everyone, Hudson Henry here. I'm a Portland, Oregon based photographer, photo educator, and today I want to talk about making a really big triptych metal print. Uh, I'm going to use Om1 Software's Photo Raw 2019 to prep and get this thing ready, and then I'm going to send it off to my favorite lab for metal prints, Bay Photo. Uh, I've been using them for years and years, and I'll show you some tips along the way to just get a little bit better output both in photo raw and in the ordering process. And if you haven't heard of one or other of on one or photo raw, we'll just get ready because it's, it's gonna be kind of a treat. So my wife and I are gonna replace a big print that I created on my, my Epson big format, you know, roll feed 9900 printer and had put onto ultra board for, for an exhibit at a commercial space here in Portland. We've had it up on the wall. It's a beautiful image of Mount Hood with, with a sliver moon rising just before sunrise. But we're gonna replace it with a triptych image, 90 inches by 40 inches. So three 40 by 30 inch vertical prints of the Kalala, of the Hanalei Valley on Kauai, one of my absolute favorite places on earth. And you know, without too much further ado, I'll jump in and talk about prepping that as well as ordering it from Bay Photo. I really like using Bay Photo because they've been making metal prints longer than just about anybody and they have more options for sizing, uh, and for finishes, they offer everything from a really high gloss finish, which, which isn't my favorite because it has so much reflectivity. You see that a lot in coffee shops and places with those really beautiful metal prints, but they're real shiny. Down to a, a satin finish, which I really like, which has almost no reflectivity. Uh, and then some sheer finishes where you can see the metal through. And I'm gonna go ahead and order a sample pack from an image from Moab that I'll show you how I edit just to get ready for that alongside this big triptych print that's this panoramic merger that's almost 300 megapixels. It's created from 36 individual frames shot at 50 millimeters with a, with a 36 megapixel Nikon D800 some years ago. So let's jump in, let's have a look. So I'm right here, I'm in Photo Raw 2019.5 on one's, on one's pretty killer uh, photo editing and browsing package here. I'm in the Browse app. You can see this image that we're gonna break into three parts and print huge. Uh, and, and if I take a, oh, I just hit the wrong button. If I take a look, I'm opening the panel, not hitting export. If I open up this panel, you can see it's over 26,000 pixels wide and over 10,000 pixels high. It's right around 280 megapixels. It's a really big image and it's actually created, if I go into my grid view here, from all 36 of these individual frames. It's actually two rows of 18 frames knitted together into this one big ultra high resolution print. And, and I'd love to show you the process of doing all, all that. Uh, I have a course on how to do ultra high resolution panorama mergers uh, that, that shows from start to finish the process in the field and in post-production. But it, it's a longer, more convoluted process than I really have time for in this video. So I'm gonna jump instead into this single frame image and we're gonna order a sample pack of, of images, different finishes. Uh, I'll show you the ordering process and then we can unbox all this stuff when it gets here and take a look at what each of them looks like. So instead I'm gonna go into edit. This is the edit portion. You basically broke it into browse and edit. Oh, you know, one, one thing that's cool is when you're in browse in on one, you can actually select a whole group of images like these, you know, all 36 of them if you want. You can do any kind of compositing that you want, whether you want to do raw processing non-destructively to blend them into layers, whether you want to create panoramas, do HDR editing or focus stacking, all those things are right here in the Browse app. They're just a single click when you click multiple images. Instead, we're going to go in and we're going to edit this one image that, that's ready to go. And I've already done quite a bit of editing on it. Here it's rendering. Uh, it's not really that red, I promise. It was really beautiful light that night. And, and I'll show you what the, the flat raw looked like. It looked just like that. So uh, what I've got going is some basic raw processing where I've, I've just adjusted uh, my, my exposure. I've moved contrast, highlights, shadows, white, black point. I haven't done much with regard to color temperature. I actually cooled it down a little bit because it was such a red, warm evening. It looked surreal. I've added no saturation here globally. I boosted sharpening just a little bit. All these kind of global edits that I did right here in On1's develop panel. 
Now, you can do this differentially with multiple layers of the same image, bring other images into composite. It's a really powerful edit app. But it also has these other components. There are local adjustments that you can do where you can do a lot of these, these, these tone and color adjustments and paint them in with a brush or drop them in with a graduated filter. There's a portrait section for doing uh, portrait retouching where it identifies eyes and teeth. And then there's this effects section which actually has a, a layered sort of Photoshop-like, you'd like to think, uh, stack of effects that each have a mask and the ability to do uh, luminosity masking or just painting masking in or graduated masking. All that stuff is at your fingertips here, along with a lot of distraction removal tools and masking tools and text tools. I mean, it's, it's a deep level software. I, I often use presets. So, you know, I'll open this left panel here for a second and I have all my presets. I actually did my develop adjustments and then went into some of my mountain and desert presets I created this year. Um, and I actually chose this one called Magic Light and applied it to the image. And then, then all I do, do, just by a simple click, it will apply all the filters necessary to get that look. And then you can go in, it won't adjust any of your global develop settings. Those are left sacrosanct. It's just adding these effects filters. You can go in and tweak them to taste. So you might want to adjust the vignette, for example, or you might want to change the individual color tones in the color enhancing filtering. You can go through and deactivate each of these and see what effect they're having on the overall image. You can see as I turn these off, that's what it looked like with just the develop global settings. And then I start doing these effects filters. And you can add more of them just by clicking on this add filter button. And they give you little descriptions and an example of what they're going to do. It's fun to see a lot of my images in here that on one has used as examples like that one. And, and uh, let's see, there's another that one. And just, there's another one I just saw. Yeah, well, I saw it. That one is mine. And yeah, that one. Anyhow, fun stuff. So I've pretty much got this image ready to go. Another thing to remember is all of this editing is completely non-destructive. It's just metadata editing. Even when you go in and do masking on these individual effects layers, nothing is actually changed at the pixel level. It's just writing metadata instructions on how to handle that raw file. Um, so, you know, one trick I like to do before I print, there's a couple things I would do to this image that, that I wouldn't necessarily always do, but I want to make sure I do before I go ahead and print it big. I'm going to close this left panel so I can see a little bit more of the image. I want to zoom in so that I'm at, well, you know, I don't need to be at 100%. Let me go to my navigation view here. I'm going to go to 50% so I can see a little bit more of the image at a time. But I see there's some sensor dust here, and I want to grab my retouch tools. I'm going to use the perfect eraser, which is pretty much just that. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger than that bit of sensor dust. Click on it and watch it vanish. It's taking it a little time, but it does a really fantastic job. And you know, there's, there's nothing worse than spending the time editing an image, getting it all ready to print, sending it off, and then finding that, oh my gosh, I forgot to get rid of that bit of sensor dust in the sky. And it's even worse if you're sending it off to a client and they're the one that discovers that you didn't take the time that you should have with the project that they've paid you a bunch of money to do. So, you know, there, there's nothing worse, especially if you're sending it off to a lab. You know, it's, it's maddening enough to make a mistake on your own printer, let alone when you're, you're sending it off to a lab. So... You know, make sure you go over the image with a fine tooth comb and look for any, any spots of sensor dust or distractions that you want to get rid of before you spend the money to get this printed. Um, so let's, I think it looks pretty good. There weren't too many. I also noticed though, and I can grab this little block right here. I also noticed, oh, thought I grabbed it, that there's a street sign in the frame. And I'm actually going to zoom into 100% for this part of the job. And I want to resize this perfect eraser just a little bit bigger than the street sign and, and check out the power of this distraction removal tool. It's a pretty complicated background in the back. I think it's just going to wipe that sign right out. Amazing. And that's all non-destructive. I, I just, this stuff is so fun. 
I just love where photo editing's gone lately. All right, so there's that. Now, one more trick that I would always do before I actually send a print off to the lab, I like to, to click on the top filter in the stack and add one more on top of that, and that is going to be a curve layer. And this is just for printing. In this curve layer, I want to grab the top right part of the curve. And what this corresponds to is it's the white. It's saying what level of white in the image gets remapped to what level of white. And, and just, just know you don't have to understand this if, if you're not familiar with curves and with the, the digital representation of color. Pure white in digital output is 255 value for red, 255 value for green, 255 value for blue. Pure black is 0, 0, 0, 0, and everything else is some shade of all three of those in the color spectrum. I want to remap 255, 255, 255, so I've selected all three color channels that I have the, the graph for here. And I want to change 255 in to about 252 out. Well, why am I doing that? Well, that's just making sure that there's no part of the image that is actually pure white. I want some shade of gray, even if it looks like white to the human eye, I want some ink laid down everywhere on that piece of metal. I don't want any part of that piece of metal being pure white. And that's a quick little trick that'll just avoid any spot in your print not having ink laid down on it. Now that may be a little less important for metal prints. I've never tested the theory, uh, but it's really important with paper prints. With paper prints, if there's a spot where there's no ink on the paper, you'll often see a big gloss differential where there's this, this flat spot if the light hits the print wrong. And, and you're like, ooh, and it's just a spot where there was no detail, pure white. So to avoid that, just do that little bit of a curve tweak and that will fix it. So then all that's left is to hit this export button. And when we go ahead to export this, I don't want to resize it because th this image is plenty big enough. It's a 36 megapixel image and we're just sending it off to, to do some, uh, some sample packs. We're going to do it five, eight by 12 images and all the different metal finishes of this just to compare them when they get here. I'm going to have it be a JPEG photo. So the file type is JPEG, that's what Bayphoto prefers, 100% quality, and I'm going to put it in Adobe RGB color space. Now if I was sharing this on the internet or something, I would want to choose sRGB, but for, for uh, Bayphoto, that's the widest color space that they view and accept, so that they recommend either sRGB or Adobe RGB, I'd rather be Adobe RGB. Uh, and I'm putting it into a folder that I have on my fast SSD on my computer, and I'm just gonna go ahead, click export. We're done. We've got the thing ready to print. Now we're just gonna jump into the Bay Rose software and order it. All right, so let me show you how easy it is to order this stuff from Bay Photo. So, I mean, first of all, if you haven't used them before, you're gonna have to download their Rose software. It's really easy to use. I'm gonna walk you through it. You come to the bayphoto.com website, uh, if you go into products, you can find information about their metal prints, lots more about the surfaces and sizes and custom sizes that they offer. Uh, since we're also going to talk about um, we're going to talk about splits and clusters, there's a lot of information about that here too. And, and their splits and clusters actually um, are available in more than just metal. You can get them in canvas, you can get them in thin wrap and wood prints and all these acrylics and different things. Pretty cool stuff. So all that information is there and the Rose software is there. Also, just I'd say, you know, if you go to onone.com, you can find uh, the, the Photo Raw app and there's a free 30-day trial. If you like it, think about joining on one Plus Pro. That enters you in a community with a whole bunch of courses from myself and other photo instructors, um, or you can just buy it as a standalone software, no subscription necessary. Um, so 30-day trial is right there. If you're interested in more stuff from me, including my Panorama course or some free downloads, that stuff is all right here on my website. Just go to training, and I also have a YouTube channel that I upload weekly photo training videos and discussions about sort of all things photographic. Um, so feel free to jump into any of that stuff. Once you've gone to Bay Photo, you can find the Bay Rose app, which is how you're gonna order these prints. You just uh, fire that thing up, 
it's going to open. You'll have an account that you set up with Bay Photo when you first activate this. It'll check in with Bay to see what the current product list is. You can, you can maximize this thing. And what we want is metal prints. So we're going to go ahead and click that we're interested in metal prints. And I'm going to add an image folder. That's down here. And I can say, let's go to my desktop, and I've got some working files here. Photography and prints is one of those. So let's open that folder. And sure enough, there's our two images. And we wanted to order this Moab image in a 8x12 sample pack. And then it just says drag your and drop your image here. So I can just drag it up, drop it, and everything's all set up essentially here for us. We're going to do one satin uh, straight corners, one sheer glossy straight corners. Um, so essentially you see there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's the finishing. Each one of these has sort of the options here. So finishing for the glossy print, corners for the glossy print, straight corners, no hangers or holes. Um, they're just going to be samples. Uh, we got the MIG gloss one, satin, no hangers or holes, uh, straight corners. It's going to be the same for each and every one. I prefer the straight corners to the rounded. A lot of people like rounded. You, have, you can see how many options they have. They have all these different levels of rounded corners if you're into it. Um, we just go right along here, bing, 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 bing. You know, if I wanted to go ahead and add in a uh, float mount hanger, I might do that. That way I could hang these things uh, in a small space if I wanted to. I'll go ahead with a f just add a float mount hanger to each one of those. It adds $2.50 to the whole deal, so not such a big deal. So that's one, two, yeah, there we go. Got all those done. And then I can just say add to cart. Boom. That one's in the cart, $68.50. That's going to give us a sample pack of 8x12s. Now let's do the big split. And you can see up here, we've got clusters and splits. Single metal prints, double float metal prints, clusters and splits. I'm going to go ahead and click on clusters and splits. And I want to do just kind of a, I've got all the sizes right here to choose from. So what I'm doing is scrolling down, I can see all these different cluster options. They make it really easy for you, just like they do with single metal prints. You can go through and look at all the different size options that we have here. And like I said, it goes all the way up to 48 by 96. And then you've got custom sizes that you can choose from too, just kind of get charged by the square inch. You know, as you go in here, there's also, I forgot to mention, there are retouching options that you can, you can have Bay Photo do retouching for you. We've already done all that work in Photo Raw, so I'm not even gonna worry about that at all. You can leave a note for them if you want them to pay special attention to something. Sometimes I put in there, hey, make sure the colors look good. These days I've done so much work with them, I know they always do that and, and it's going to be fine. So I don't even worry about it. Okay, so the next print we want, we want to get a cluster and split. We're going to um, go down here and the cluster and split I want, there are all these different options that we've got. I mean, tons of cool ways that you can set this up with multiple images or a single image. Uh, we're going to go into the product options here and I want to go ahead and I'm going to choose a classic or a portrait triptych 90 by 42 inches and I want not an individual image on each panel, I want a split image mosaic. And then what I can do is just take this image of the Kalala or the Hanalei Valley and drag it up here and drop it and there you see. You know, I already sized it in on one, did all that, the, the work that I wanted, and that's what my print's going to look like in those three pieces, each of them about, you know, 30 by 40. And so I'm going to go ahead uh, and, and look at my options for this. Obviously, this is a big print, so I'm going to be a little careful with it. I want a split image mosaic. Uh, we're doing it as a cluster and split. Uh, there's going to be three 30 by 40 images. Uh, they'll hang oriented as displayed. Uh, I don't want any stainless steel posts. I want float mount hangers to print, float the print half an inch off the wall. Exactly. That's perfect. Uh, if you hover over these things, it'll tell you what I'm talking about. I don't want those posts. 
Uh, some people love them, it's not my spot style. I don't like the flush mount. I really want it to just be a sheet of metal. You'll see how it looks when it comes in the box, but I want it to just float off the wall. Uh, the print surface, I want satin. As I said, I don't like that reflectivity. Um, and I don't want rounded corners, I want straight corners. I like the nice sharp corner. Um, I don't need any retouching options, so all I need to do is add this to the cart. You can see this is an expensive print, uh, but I mean, that's not bad for, for the size that we're talking about. You should be able to upsell a client a lot more than that. Think about putting this in a law office. They're going to expect to pay a lot more than $678. If they were paying that, they'd think that it was too cheap to put in their office. So this gives you a lot of opportunity uh, to upsell. So we get into the cart. Uh, I've got these two. I got an 8x12 sample pack of our Moab image. I have the portrait triptych. All I, I, the color correction that's included is just them looking it over, making sure it looks good. I trust them to do that, having used them for as long as I have. Don't need any crates because we have 30 by 40 inch. Uh, well, you might. You might put a crate for prints 30 by 40 inches or smaller. So I'm going to put that in there because we do have three prints that adds $45 to the order. Um, I don't need any boutique packaging. I don't need any special supplies, but it's cool that they're, that they're available. There's a rush charge. Now, typically Bayphoto is going to get this done in about three to five days for metal prints, business days from your order. If you need it rushed, it, it costs 50% more. There's a, two different rush levels. Uh, that, that can cut the production time in half or in a quarter. Um, so depending on if you really need it fast, it's possible. I'd also call them on the phone. Any special instructions, um, you know, um, check with Mallory. I, I have a little, I'm someone that I'm working with at Bay Photo on this order. Uh, and boom, I can just either save it for later or proceed to checkout. In this case, I'm going to save it for later. The checkout's just the same kind of digital process in that you're used to entering your billing information, your credit card, everything. Before I shoot this order out, I'll, uh, I'll go in and put all my credit card information in privately. So let's check out what these prints look like in a week when they come back from the lab. Well, sweet. So it only really took like two business days for this to land here, but I kind of think, you know, they, they have an idea that, that I'm working on this video. So again, you know, two to five business days just depends on what their production schedule is. And you can always get it rushed for a little bit more money. But you can see how this whole thing is really nicely packaged and crated. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop it open. Let's see what these look like. All right, so out of the box, this 90 by, by 40 split looks amazing. I can't wait to see it on my living room wall. I got also have the sample pack of this Moab shot. Um, and it's interesting, I haven't ordered a bunch of these before. The, the sheer gloss has that kind of glossy, catches the light. Um, but you can kind of see the grain of the metal through it. It's kind of an interesting modern look. Um, I could see certain applications, much like kind of a matte paper, uh, where that might be interesting. You know, maybe more in a black and white too. The, the sheer matte has a little less reflectivity. You can still see that kind of metal grain through it. It's, it's almost reminiscent of kind of, a, kind of seeing the grain of a fine art paper. Um, high gloss, I know it's really popular. You've seen it, I'm sure, in a bunch of places. Really catches the light and reflects. Uh, but it has beautiful, beautiful, deep, deep uh, color and, you know, dark, darks, bright, brights. It's eye-catching. It's just, uh, for me, it's a little reflective. I think this MIG gloss is kind of a nice compromise if you like that gloss. You know, and once again, I ordered this in the satin. Uh, I pretty much order all my metal prints in satin. I really like the satin. You know, it, it may not be quite as eye-catching in just the right light as a gloss, but it doesn't have that reflectivity. It's kind of like putting uh, you know, a museum quality archival non-reflective glass in front of your frame matted print. Um, and I think it has, <coughs> pardon me, I think it has beautiful deep blacks, bright saturated colors. It just pops in a way that's difficult to do in a paper print. So awesome stuff. And I'm gonna go over and hang that on my living room wall.